back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. And let's talk horror. Today we're going to do our top 10 worst sequels ever. And again, just like with our best sequels, two caveats. One, it has to be a direct sequel, Number only a part two. two. And these are our least favorites. There are some on the list that people actually really love. But these are just the ones that we don't like as much. So, you want to start us out at number 10? So, number 10, we have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, this, <laughs> this movie is, it's it's just crazy. Like It's not a bad movie. It, it's it, a, I just don't like it as a follow-up to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it's like you go from this, like, artsy type movie to this like over the top over the top like almost like humorous movie so yeah again not a terrible movie not anywhere in the realm of a good sequel to a classic so. yeah coming in at number nine we have the rage carry two another movie that is just not a movie i get into not a movie that holds a candle anywhere near to what the first one is I don't feel the same type of empathy and sympathy as I do in this film. I feel like this is a cash grab yeah. rather than a movie that was really trying to make you fall in love with a character. So for me, uh, number nine, I got to say, yeah, I always say for me, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, number nine, The Rage Carry 2. Um, at number eight, we have Brahms The Boy 2. This is another one. It's just, it really retconned what the first one did. The whole movie. Yeah, like everything that you learned about in the first one, just forget it because it's not going to be relevant here. Um, the things that you thought were going to happen in the first one do happen in this one, like the possession and stuff like that. Um, you don't have an actual boy behind the walls, and it's just... And the first one's not great. No, it's not, but this <laughs> but one... But it's better than this one. It absolutely is, so... This one looked to me like they were trying to make like its own like Brahms alternate universe. But, I mean, they should have... They had to have gone about it a different way. Like, you can't have it not be a possessed doll and have a boy in the wall, and then go to the boy being possessed the you know the doll being possessed now like yeah it really did not make sense go and it's the same team that did it that's where you're even more like of a head scratcher like what the hell you're yeah. the same people you're retconning your own stuff um coming in at number seven is a movie that a lot of people hate mm -hmm. and i mean hate and that is american psycho too now mm -hmm. obviously i'm not a huge fan of mila kunis in this role but this movie was never meant to be American Psycho. Too. It, they were like, it, it's close enough. Let's just slap that name right on there. Yeah. Money. And it's, what? It's At least it's got, like, moments that genuinely do make me laugh just with how absurd it is. Yeah. But, um... But I don't think it's meant to. <laughs> no. And it's not. But, again, it's, it's nowhere near what American Psycho was. So we had to make sure that this was on our list just because of how disappointing it was. Yeah. Um, number six, we have The Nun 2. And... It's no secret, the first one sucks, this one sucks, um, they just, they cannot make a good nun movie, and it's very, very sad to me, because I think Valak is terrifying. Um, I do think the second one is... It's better than the oh, the original, the first one, I will give you that. But, but it's that's, still bad. That's not saying much. That's setting the bar extremely low. Yeah, it, I mean, besides, like, the acting, there's nothing else that's great about this movie right there's a lot of the same hiding in the shadows and um you know waiting for her to come out and it's just like come on like why can't you do something with this villain she's so good right and just the reasons and oh makes no, no sense it doesn't uh coming in at number five sometimes they come back again that's all i really gotta say the first sometimes they come back is one of my absolute favorite movies of all yeah. time easily my favorite stephen king adaption this is another movie where they're like, let's take that same premise, kind of do the same thing, call it a sequel so we can try to get some money out of it. Again, slap that name on there and... It didn't work no. for me whatsoever. So, it... number five, sometimes they come back again. Number four, we have The Descent 2. Um, how long can she live down in that damn cave? Like, are we serious? This is a movie that never needed to happen. <laughs> the Descent could have been just its own movie, a standalone, and I would have been happy. This movie, it, it was pointless, in my opinion. These movies, four through one, are the, a lot of these movies are, but especially four through one are the definition of cash grab. Yeah. Um, they saw what the first one did, they tried to capture it again. And it just didn't work. And it failed miserably. Now this next one, I know a lot of people love this movie. I feel like we're in the minority here, but. I don't get it, I don't man. either. It's 
Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. We try. We try to like this. Like, we, I remember watching We just watching rewatched it. it recently. We watched it, you know, when we were younger. And then we're like, okay, all these people that we really do, like... Um, that are friends of yeah, ours, that are peers. We, we're like, okay, let's just try it. Let's give it a try. No. We're not even friends with them anymore. No, we, yeah, we <laughs> cut ties. Like, you guys suck. No, I'm just kidding. No, we still um, love you, even if you hate this piece of shit. Right. Um, my thing is, like, it... The Blair Witch Project was such a fantastic movie, and it broke barriers on bringing found footage into the forefront, making it mainstream. All the you know marketing that went along with it, this probably one of the best marketing movies of all time. That will never, you'll never get a marketing like that again. No. Ever. And this movie, they didn't even. They were just like, "Hey, let's make a Hollywood version of it and turn it in." And I don't know. Like people have tried to sell me on it, and if you like this movie, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm envious. I want to like every movie I see. There's never a movie that I see where I go, I hope I hate this movie. If you like something, I'm glad. Yeah. I wish I did. This is a piece of shit to me. I don't like this movie whatsoever. Number three, Blair Witch, Book of Shadows. Number two, we have American Werewolf in Paris. Yes, in Paris. Um, it, I don't, I don't even know what to say about this movie. It's awful. It is. It's awful. Uh, okay, like the movie itself, I guess, is not that bad. I guess you know it's passable. Coming it's off one of the barely. best, it's like a D. Yeah, coming off one of the best made practical effect movies of all time, and you're trying to make a sequel to it with their daughter, and the CGI in this is just it's, bad. It, it definitely downgrades it. You you had this amazing practical werewolf transformation. You, I don't think you can go from that and then go to this horrible CGI. Like it's just. Negative points. Right. Right off the top. Now, you guys knew clicking on this video what number one was. You knew it. I mean, it, but again, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. But it's The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Holy shit. Wow. Um, again, I, I hate to sound like we just put everything down. We genuinely try to be positive people. We do, but um, you can't be positive here. And like we've said millions of times, if you're creating art, I hope there's an audience for it. Absolutely. I hope there are people that like what you are making. It this, just ain't us. Not for this Especially one. this one. Um, and this movie, I I don't even know what to say. Like, coming off of... And what, what makes it even worse is it's sandwiched in between two of the best movies. Yeah. Like, two of my favorite movies in The Exorcist and The Exorcist 3. And the meat in between those buns is sour. It's gross meat that's in between the buns. It's and a green hot dog. Yeah. it's. I'd be envious for a green hot dog after watching this movie. So it's just a movie that, again, it's, definition of cash grab. It, it there was no heart to it. There was no... Um, Not like the first one. Right. The, the first one had heart. It had scariness. It... It, had, it was a it was a passion project. Yeah, and this, this is not. There's no not. passion whatsoever in The Exorcist 2. Definition of cash grab. I know we've said that word a lot today. Take a drink every time we've said it. I hope you're drunk by now. But, you know, they, they didn't want to make a movie for the masses. They wanted to make a movie for money. And that never works in our opinion. So let us know down in the comments below. What are some sequels that we talked about that you do like? What are some sequels that we missed that you can't stand? I would love to know. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does help build the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.